Hi guys, it's Angie with Fun Endeavors Tie-Dye Lab. Today, I'm going to make a pumpkin shirt, and I'm going to put a pattern on the backbone area. The shirt was washed and dried, soaked in a soda ash solution for at least 20 to 30 minutes, then I wrung it out in my panda spin dryer so it's just barely damp. It's also turned inside out. Since I'm putting a different design on the front of the shirt than I'm putting on the back of the shirt, I need to find the center of the front of my shirt and the center of the back of my shirt. So to do that, I'm going to fold my shirt in half. And using a washable marker, I'm going to make a mark down at the bottom and top, both on the inside and outside of the shirt, right on that center line. Grabbing the two marks that I made on the front of the shirt, I'm going to pinch those marks, lift my shirt up off of the table, give it a little shake and lay it down. So what I've done is I have pulled out just the front of my shirt. The back of my shirt is off camera right now because I zoomed in so you could see this a little bit better. So I'm going to add my design only to the front of the shirt. I have a pumpkin stencil that I made and used for something else. I'm going to lay half of that stencil on the shirt and trace around it. Then I'm going to do a little bit of touch up so that I can get the stem correct and the pumpkin shape better. I'm beginning by fan folding the pumpkin area and I'm making pretty small fan folds so that I can get all around these curves and keep my line straight on my fan folds. I have the pumpkin fan folded and I'm going to go ahead and tie it up with some sinew before I move on to the stem. I'm going to do a couple wraps and then pull it nice and tight and do a few more wraps. I'm going to do some really tiny little fan folds and fan fold this stem area. I know it's a little bit difficult to see because the stem is so small. I went ahead and left my sinew attached to the pumpkin area and I'm going to go ahead and do a couple small wraps around this stem. Then a couple more around the pumpkin just to kind of stabilize and hold everything in place. To do the design on the backbone area of the shirt, I'm going to grab the two marks that I made on the back of the shirt, lift the shirt up off of the table and give it a small shake too, then lay it back down. From here, all that I'm going to do is fan fold the seam that goes straight down the back of the shirt. You can make these fan folds as large or small as you want. Mine are about the same width as the hem on the shirt.
I don't really want the white lines in this part of the design, so I'm going to tie it up with some kite string. I'm going to tuck one sleeve inside of the other one and line my seams up. And now I want to try to get the shirt to lay as flat as possible. But to get the design as flat as I can, I'm going to take the sleeves and crumple them down into the sleeve hole. and kind of make folds with the sleeves and the rest of the shirt. Just a few little crumple or scrunch folds and use some rubber bands to hold all this in place. To dye the shirt, I've put it on top of a rack and I've placed my dye down inside of some small needle tip bottles. These are about one ounce bottles, just so that I have better control over my dye placement. I'll leave a link down in the description for the video of where I purchased these bottles, as well as links to where I purchased my dye and some of the other products that I commonly use when I tie dye. The stem of the pumpkin is New Emerald Green from Dharma Trading Company. For the pumpkin area, I'm going to use orange MX2R from Custom Colors. And I want to make sure I get the orange saturated, but I don't want it oversaturated because I don't want it to run a lot. Right outside of the orange for the pumpkin, I'm going to add lemon yellow from Grateful Dyes. For the backbone design, I'm going to use lemon yellow and the orange MX2R. For the rest of the shirt, I'm going to use New Emerald Green from Dharma Trading Company. I ran out of New Emerald Green partway through the shirt, so I had to mix up a second batch. The first batch is full strength the way that the color is intended to be mixed up, but the second batch I mixed at half strength. I thought changing the concentration of the dye would give a little bit of extra depth to the color.
After I finished applying the dye, I set the shirt aside and allowed it to process for 48 hours. I rinsed it really well, washed it in my washing machine using hot water and Dharma's textile detergent, dried it in the dryer, and this is what our shirt looks like. I like the added depth of using the two different concentrations of the green for the bulk of the shirt. The pumpkin, you can tell it's a pumpkin. Of course, there's a gap between the stem and the pumpkin part because I put that line of sinew in there. If I did it again, I probably would raise the pumpkin up just a little bit on the shirt. It's a little bit lower than what I wanted. And I think it would be good to maybe go in and put some definition lines in the pumpkin with either some dye or paint or something like that. I'm not entirely sure. Right now, I think I'm just going to leave it alone. I do like the backbone, though. I like the little star areas that came from that middle seam of the backbone. I think those look really neat. And I do think it looks like a festive fall shirt. So hey, if you guys have enjoyed watching this video or any of my other videos, I sure would appreciate it if you'd hit the big red subscribe button and subscribe to my YouTube channel. Thank you all for watching and I hope you have a great day.